talk about a very particular watch today, the Omega Speedmaster Professional. And you brought one uh, beautiful old 1969 piece. Right. I mean, what is the first thing that is striking? If we look at both of these watches, nothing uh, much has changed, has Nothing it? has changed. So this is the model over all the decades from the mid 60s until today, where superficially uh, looking at the watch, you say, it's the same watch. This one is a bit faded, the other one is more in black, but what's the difference? But there are differences and there let's are. talk about it. We found out looking at the, at the dials that the, the dial from 1969 still has a step while the modern one is flat. And the bezel uh, writing is a bit different. It's the numbers are closer to the, to the glass. Tiny little things, but I show you one thing where every even a beginner can tell it's a pre-moon Speedmaster or it's a uh, Speedmaster after the moon landing. So if I turn around my watch, I just see the symbol of the Speedmaster. What do we see here? The same thing, but it's written, this was the first watch worn on the moon by the NASA missions. And it was Apollo 11 that uh, made this watch a milestone. So since uh, the moon landing, this watch it was world famous. And also after the moon landing, all the other NASA missions, uh, astronauts wore Speedmaster professionals. And it was not Omega sponsoring NASA, it was NASA checking yes. all the watches and deciding for the Speedmaster. What is very striking to me, if I take a, if I take a look at it, I mean, this watch is from the late 60s and it would still have the same case diameter as it has today. Yeah. That means it was huge. It was a humongous watch back it then. It was. 42, that was a really big watch. Bigger than a Submariner, two millimeters more than a Submariner. And it took Rolex many yes. years to go beyond the 40 millimeters. And for me, that was also the reason not to have one because my wrist is too small. So in my collection, I have a very early one, which has a smaller case from the early 60s. It still has a 39 millimeter case mm -hmm. and has different hands. And selling vintage watches at Bachmann and Scher, uh, I'm looking at the price the development of the vintage Speedmasters. And I can tell you one thing, they, they have a great development seen in the last couple of years. It's definitely one of the three or four best vintage chronographs I can tell you about. This is a milestone. Every collection should have one and you have to find out whether you want to have your birth year in your collection or a certain year for NASA. There were so many mission watches with mission symbols from the Speedmasters. You know what I really like about this watch? I mean, when we talk about the go-to watch for any collector or about to become collector, I think is a watch you can pretty much wear to anything. Yeah. It's certainly on the on the more sporty side of the range. Yeah, certainly sporty oriented as a chronograph with the tachymeter scale, but still the clean design just makes it a watch you can wear to pretty much anything. It's something you can invest on into a pre-moon Speedmaster. This is one of the watches I would say this is a great collector's watch. This is quite uh, sexy and cool. It has a milestone character, great movement, and uh, you don't destroy money, which is a nice thing. 